And in this video, I want to go ahead and work on setting up the firearm collision. So in the previous one, we adjusted our idle pose and everything so we can actually, you know, visually see it. Now I want to actually take it and, well, put it into use. So first thing that we need is we need a way to reference a muzzle. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a muzzle component to our firearm. And as you can see here, we set it up basically the exact same way. So we have our skeletal mesh. We have a default muzzle socket name, so S underscore muzzle, which we can copy. Now, since this is a basically a complete firearm, no additional stuff needed. Well, aside from you can add a can, I guess. But we want to set the muzzle tag to the barrel. So we're going to leave that as default. Now, if you had a piece-by-piece -piece firearm, kind of like the example M4, you would not have a muzzle component on the firearm itself. You would put it on the barrel with the tag barrel, and then your additional muzzle devices, you would add, like your muzzle brakes, you would set those to be the muzzle device. And then later when you have suppressors that go on top of the muzzle devices, you would give them the tag of suppressors. So it basically uses the tags as kind of like an ordering system so it knows which muzzle device to use. So we're going to go to our firearm mesh, and we're just going to go ahead and add the muzzle socket. So let's go ahead and move it up too far. Move it to the front of the muzzle. About like so, got to go up a little bit. And we want to make sure it's rotated forwards. So to do so, and the easy way to see is when you grab one of these axes, such as the Y, you can see the orientation it's pointing. So we want to rotate it 90 degrees to the left, and I do not have snapping, so rotate it 90 degrees to the left and hit save. All right now in our firearm component, I've already actually set these, but basically by default, use firearm collision is everything's going to be enabled and set up for the most part. But we want to set the pose and rotate, or the two curves for the location and rotation. So first one's going to be, well, they are the first ones that come up, and these are the examples. So we're just going to grab those. And let's actually take a quick look at it. So really what they kind of do is you can see it starts to pull back. Let's see, I can't remember which axis is which, but one of these is rotation. But basically, yeah, so this one I think is the roll. So as it starts to go into short stock, we're rolling the firearm. And then as we go and we uh, decompress, we start relaxing it and that kind of thing. No, oh, this is location. That's why I'm confused. Rotation. Okay. So... I don't know. One of these are the roll. I cannot honestly remember which axis does what, but similar to the sway, once you adjust an axis, you kind of know what it does. So it's really just kind of one of those things of figure it out. But you can see we kind of pull the firearm down. So as I go, it keeps going in and compressing. Now you will notice a problem here of the farther I go forwards, it does push the firearm out of the way, but it does start to clip a little bit. So what we can do is we can make it go through the curve faster. So if you hover over here, you can see higher value equals, I can't actually move my mouse onto the comment, equals farther iteration through the curve for each unit of distance pushed from the collision. So by default, that is one. If we bump that up to two, it's probably going to be too much. Actually, might, that might be about right. So as you can see, as I keep going in, it still pushes the firearm out of the way, and it's not clipping through the wall anymore. So like so. Now we do have an issue with the two bone IK. So we want to pull that shoulder back <laughs> quite a bit. So we're going to go to our animation blueprint here and our anim graph. Oh, that's the anim layer, isn't it? Oh, that's right. The It's in the anim starter pack, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to go to our anim BP, find our two bone IK. That one was for the, yeah, the left hand. So right now you can see we're off to the side. We're going to pull it back. Pile and save and walk into the wall again. So it was right when it started to kind of break the crease. All right, so we're still pointing out to the side. And go in and down
and that is too much. So let's try to find a middle ground. So we're just going to go out and hopefully that'll start pulling it correctly. Okay, so that is a lot better. So that's in a more neutral slash natural position. Right hand is still for the most part fine, but we're probably going to have the same issues if we ever get into the uh, hand swapping to where you switched into left handed. That's not really a huge concern. But anyways, so that's what this setting here does. So it's basically how fast you go through the curve. So let's say we walk, so we just barely nick the wall and we walk forwards by 20 centimeters. Let's say at the value of one, so let's say this is one, we could potentially be here at 20. Let's say we bump it up to two. Well, we still go, uh, well, what did I say? Was it 20 centimeters forwards into the wall? Something like, I can't remember exactly. But instead of being at 20, we could be at, say, 40. So it just advances how fast you're going to go through the curve. So it's kind of like a, like I write on it, scale. So it scales based upon, really it just kind of depends on the curve and the curve length. So you can completely define the curve. So I could make this curve instead of it being, you know, 55 frames long, I could make it, you know, be 150. And the only thing that would happen is I just need to bump up the scale to kind of match with it. So this is kind of how it just it compensates for having to deal with a specific length so you can have a little bit more control. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So we now have our muzzle component set up with our firearm collision. So I think we're pretty much good to go in this video. So I will see you in the next one because I don't know what I'm going to do yet.